My name is Ayobam Yulifadeji. I'm originally from Nigeria, and I'm a student at the Geyser School of Medicine at Dartmouth. Morning. That is not on right now because... <laughs> I just come back from school, I was five, and I said, this I hear people crying, what's going on? And she explained to me that someone who had a headache, had gone to the hospital and then eventually passed away. And I remember my mother and I asked her and I said, Mom, why did people, why, why did things like this happen? Like who's not, why aren't they getting taken care of? And she said to me, it's cause we don't have enough doctors. And she said, maybe one day you can become a doctor for us. At that point, I found a way, not just to, to give back to my community, but to do something that my mother would have liked. I have a Nigerian flag in my room that I look at every morning when I wake up. For me, it gives me a sense of purpose and it gives me something to look forward to because I, I know that I'm doing the right thing to be able to reach my goal. Like this, this, is, this is part of the process. My name is Dean Okoff. I'm the Director of Financial Aid and Assistant Dean for Student Affairs at uh, Geisel School of Medicine. The first time I met Ayo, uh, I met him uh, over the phone before he uh, decided to come to uh, Dartmouth. The one thing I remember is how long the conversation was. And uh, I left there thinking, this is a student that we need to have. This is somebody that's going to be a leader uh, here at Dartmouth. Uh, so I'm just about to call my mom. I wish you guys could be my mom. She's the coolest woman ever. Yeah, the, the, I had dinner with the Minister of uh, Minister of Health for Rwanda yesterday evening. That dinner was from like 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Oh, many days, just two days. Oh my gosh. Hello? So I didn't tell you. I thought I told you, sir. You want, maybe you were in London then because I was trying to tell you. Oh my gosh. The call just dropped again. It has to be your network, mommy. It's not my own. I'm in America, remember? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, not this morning. I just hung up again. Have a good rest of your day. God bless you, mommy. Bye. Love you, mom. Bye. All right, bye. Yeah. Boom. You, you, you ever get that like bubbly feeling like when you you just feel good and like right now I just feel good like I pray this morning I spoke to my mom I just I'm just ready you know it's gonna be a good day so I'm driving to class listening to Nigerian music like I do every morning pump myself up actually hold up his world experiences uh, are incredible and he tries to share a little of Nigeria with uh, with the rest of the class it's so funny because I've gotten like half of my class is like hooked to Nigerian music. It's really funny. Like when we go to parties and I can play Nigerian music and my classmates can sing along. It's so funny. Who would have thought like nerdy med students in the middle of New Hampshire would like listen to Nigerian music? He is electric. His personality is electric. When he walks into his room, the room and uh, when he smiles, it takes over. So Io is in every picture in every room of this whole entire campus. <laughs> Um, and he's like the poster child of this medical school. The goal is that one day, one day, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now that, you know, I could be a part of the movement towards positivity, towards change in Nigeria. So to the average living situation in Nigeria, see now that's a, uh, Wow, that's not a lot of money. The average annual income is about eight hundred and forty dollars, six hundred and forty US dollars a year. Like when you actually take time to think about it, um, yeah, it's it's kind of insane the amount of money that that people don't have in Nigeria. Electricity is not twenty four seven in Nigeria. That's the one thing I miss whenever I go home. I can, I mean, most things you can handle. I wanted to go home every year. That was my plan when I first came here. Um, Obviously, that hasn't, it hasn't worked out the way I wanted to. I haven't been home since I started medical school, so the summer before med school, which was 2011, I haven't been home. There's hardly a day that passes where I'm not thinking about everyone in my family. They know that I miss them a lot too, and I, try to, I talk to them at least two, three times every week, even if I can't talk to them every day. But the way I console myself all the time is that, like this is a part of the process. It's almost like I have to go to school 
at the best school that I can to become a, the best medical doctor I can be so that I can go back and do the best work that I can eventually someday. So this is this is necessary for me to get to where I need to get to. I think when, I mean, you will find this out, but one of the biggest things for me is always finding a support system. So when I was applying to med school, I mean, they tell you the very first thing is, you know, when you get there, you're gonna feel it. Like you get to the med school, you're gonna know it's for you. And to be honest with you, I didn't really think that was gonna happen. I remember coming here and just clicking, like just feeling it. The people I met were nice. Everyone was happy. It looked like they were interested in building community and taking care of each other. I just want you to know, I did Io's hair this morning. <laughs> nice. And uh, I think it looks really strong. <laughs> it looks strong. <laughs> People are interested in making sure that they bend over backwards to, to, to help you get to where you need to. There's so many mentors, so many faculties, even the staff are interested in making sure you stay fit and we have free lunches all the time. We could go a little bit higher. I, I think I could. You know, there are other people wanting to eat. Is there a wall under that? <laughs> oh. I mean, there's not a huge nightlife here in Hanover. People who come here know that, but there's obviously things to do. And with a, like, I really love my med school class and with people like that, it's easy to, um, just find stuff to do with them. We'll go out in town or go to trivia or go play basketball. Also, I'm just going out with a bunch of my friends in the medical school. We're about to play some basketball. Usually what we do on Tuesday, Thursday nights. So IO talks a great game. Also, Hard University, you know what I'm saying? Here we are. Gazel, medical students, 2015, class of 2015, intramural champions. You already know. Io, uh, Io thinks he has game and he is intense. Let me just tell you, he goes all out. He doesn't think he fouls anybody, but he's hammering them. They're bruised when they leave. I, I do believe I heard you won, but I heard there were some injuries during the game. I'm not hurt. Are you worried about my health now? One of the uh, best things uh, about Io is he knows how to have fun, but he also knows when it's work time. And uh, I think his uh, seriousness uh, in academics, his hard work, um, his leadership skills, his uh, consensus building, he's gonna do a great job in the future. These are all different qualities that uh, help make good doctors. Uh, so we're going to the hospital right now to shadow Dr. John Batsis, who's uh, one of my facilitators for on doctoring. So basically we go in the hospital every other week just to see patients and practice what it means to actually be a clinician because I mean I was saying earlier um, it's easier for me at least as a person to learn things when I see patients with the diseases because then you can talk to them it becomes more personalized and it's easier to learn sometimes you're coming and you have a chart for the patient so it's easy for you to see um, what they've had in the past but sometimes you also come in and you've never seen the patient before so it's usually difficult uh, not really difficult but it takes more work to try to figure out what the patient has and that's more fun too so uh, looking forward to seeing this patient. I haven't seen their chart yet um, because Dr. Batsis prefers that I just learn to do it um, cold and try to figure out what the patient has. So, here we go. Hi there, how are you? Hey. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ayo Bami. I'm a second year medical student working with Dr. Batsis today. How are you feeling? Nice to meet you. Good. I'm just going to bring you to the clinic if you're walking this way with okay. me. Okay. Great. Okay. My name is John Batsis. Ayo was one of the uh, First year medical students, when I first met him, he certainly has evolved and matured uh, tremendously in his in his two years. It's always nice to see uh, students like Io who who start off with a, an interest in medicine and may not have the the knowledge base, and then their their knowledge base and their ability to interact with patients really uh, increases exponentially. It just looks like you've had this cold for about <coughs> ten days, and this cold won't go away, and we, we need yeah. we need the cold to go away. Yeah. Um, Io did a, a, a great job, but and importantly was able to uh, come up with a reasonable differential in terms of what was going on with the patient and how uh, to best approach. So it's pretty much it's, like in this area? Mostly right in there, yeah. Oh. But it's, it's really a, uh, a privilege to be able to engage in, in students like Io who are motivated, mature, and, uh, and, and, and want to learn and want to do a good job. You, you created a good rapport, and it was it was a very natural, flowing. I think you know conversation. It wasn't an interview per se, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure if you felt. It. So basically, this is the culmination of the medical school experience. After your four years here, or the four years of medical education, you go to a bunch of interviews trying to figure out where you're going to go to a residency. And what happens is, at the end of that process, you rank the schools based on how you, like 
basically you rank all the schools you interview at and then all the schools rank you as well and then we have this process called match day where students receive an envelope and they open it and they find out where they're going to be for residency so it's pretty exciting stuff everyone's looking forward to it Dino just showed up too we're pretty excited about it so we're going to the hospital for special surgery <laughs> I almost cry so many times today. You see people come out there and they've worked so hard for the last four years just and basically they don't know where they're gonna go and this letter like determines their future for the next three, four, five, even seven years depending on when they go. So I'm pretty excited, can't wait to match. It's a good place to be to know that people who were in the same shoes as you two years ago are going to places like NYU and Mount Sinai and ranking like some of the top plastic programs in the country. I guess it helps me feel good about about being here. This is a good place to be and I'm pretty sure that I'm I'm, I'm being trained to, to be one of the best that I could be. I, I, I'm like at a loss for words right now. I'm just super excited. So I don't, I don't have to, I can't, I can't, I'm not articulate right now because I'm super excited about it, yeah. Just to think of where I am now and where I thought I would be. You know, I probably coming in here, I thought, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do well, but I'm, I didn't think that I would be able to, I don't want to use the word accomplish because I don't think I've done a lot, but experience, I guess. I didn't think I was going to be able to experience as much as I've been able to in the last two years. I see Ayo in the future as the uh, leader of Nigeria, using his medical skills, using his business skills, combining that with his leadership uh, skills. He'll be a leader wherever he is. So I see him leading, the, leading a country, being a force globally, and I'm excited to say it, uh, Geisel School of Medicine uh, impacted uh, his life. His career aspirations are really, are in our discussions, have been to, to head back to his homeland in Nigeria and, uh, and hopefully elicit some uh, change in the healthcare system. I really see Ayo as being uh, someone who will be able to uh, elicit change. I dream big for Nigeria. I love that country. So many things are going wrong right now and it's, start, it's really sad to see, it hurts to see. But I'm hopeful for people like me, for people like the friends I have right now who are also studying in the United States or who are studying in Nigeria, who have dreams for the country and we're hoping that um, we, could, we could find a way to fix it. When I was five or six, for me at that point, it literally was just, I had an opportunity to fill, it, to fill a need. And um, I, I decided that I was gonna try, for, at least to the best of my ability, not give up until I was able to fill that need. And, and I still haven't filled that need yet. You know, I'm, I'm here in Hanover, New Hampshire, 5,000 miles away from home. You know, it's, it's, it's still, we're still in the process of getting there. So this, this is all that means to an end. And so I'm, I'm pretty excited because I, I, I guess I have something to look forward to as I go through this journey, so. My name is Ayobami Olufadeji. I'm originally from Nigeria, and I'm a student at the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth. Did you ever think that you would be the switch? Did you ever think that you would have the switch? Did you ever think that you would be the dawn?